They didn't just carve homes into cliffs, they engineered living systems that bent rock, sun, and water to their will. For centuries, the secret logic behind Mesa Verde's cliff palaces was hidden in plain sight, dismissed as primitive shelter. But new 3D scans and archaeological sleuthing now reveal a forgotten era of innovation. Bedrock anchored walls, breathable rooms, and sun trapping alcoves tuned for survival during the climate chaos of the 1200s. Why did ancestral Pueblo engineers choose these alcoves, and how did their precision vanish for centuries? This is the story new findings finally reveal. Tree Ring Science provides the timeline for Mesa Verde's cliff palaces. Each timber beam, harvested and set into place, holds a record of its year of growth. By reading the patterns of light and dark rings, dendrochronologists have matched wood from cliff palace and neighboring dwellings to precise years. Some as early as 1190 CE, others cut and used right up to the late 1270s. This evidence pins down not just when the great building campaigns began, but also when they ended, as drought gripped the region and construction halted. The process is exacting. Field crews from the National Park Service and SIARC, working alongside tribal representatives and dendrochronology specialists, extract pencil-thin cores from ancient beams. In the lab, magnified cross-sections reveal the story. Rapid growth in wet years, tight rings in times of drought, and sometimes the bark edge that marks the moment a tree was cut. Each sample is catalogued, compared, and cross-dated against master chronologies built from living trees and archaeological timbers across the southwest. This work has anchored the construction of Cliff Palace, Spruce Tree House, and other major sites to a window spanning roughly 1190 to the late 1200s. The records show bursts of activity, whole rooms rising in a single season based on beams with bark still attached, signaling immediate use after felling. Then, as the late 1270s drought deepened, the sequence of new timbers stops. It's a pattern visible across the region, linking the pulse of construction directly to environmental change. The team behind this research brings together the National Park Service's stabilization experts, SIOX digital archaeologists, dendrochronologists from leading labs, and voices from descendant Pueblo communities. Their combined efforts create not just a calendar of events, but a foundation for understanding the engineering choices that followed. Mesa Verde's cliff palaces rise from a landscape shaped by water and stone. The alcoves that shelter these dwellings are not random openings. They form where ancient layers of cliff house sandstone meet softer shale deep within the canyon walls. Rain and snow melt seep down through the porous sandstone, following gravity until they hit the less permeable shale. Here, the water collects and slowly emerges as seep springs, clear, reliable sources that appear right at the base of the overhangs. These seeps made life possible in a region where surface water is scarce and summer heat can be relentless. Long before the cliff dwellings, ancestral Pueblo families relied on reservoirs built atop the mesa. These shallow basins trapped runoff from seasonal storms, sustaining communities for generations. But by around 1100 CE, the reservoirs began to fail. Extended droughts, silt buildup, and shrinking catchment areas left Mesa Top settlements vulnerable. The shift toward alcove living was not just about defense or dramatic views, it was a calculated response to changing water supply. Cliffside alcoves offered both protection and access to dependable seeps, even as the climate grew drier. Springs in canyons like Fuchs provided another lifeline. Residents carved trails and steps into the rock, hauling water up steep paths in ceramic jars or woven baskets. Archaeological traces of these roots still scar the canyon walls. Each trip was a test of endurance, but the payoff was vital, a steady source of water buffered from drought by the geology itself. The clustering of dwellings at alcoves with persistent seeps is no accident. Every stone laid in Cliff Palace, every room tucked under an overhang, reflects the logic of survival. The builders read the land for signs. A damp streak on sandstone, a patch of green moss, the cool breath of water trickling from the rock. These cues determined where entire communities would anchor their lives, setting the stage for the engineering feats that followed. South-facing alcoves define the cliff palaces of Mesa Verde. This orientation is no accident. When the sun climbs high in summer, deep overhangs cast cool shadows shielding rooms from direct heat. 
In winter, as the sun drops lower on the horizon, sunlight reaches deep into the alcoves, warming thick sandstone walls that act as natural heat sinks. The engineering is precise. The angle of each alcove, the depth of its overhang, and the placement of every room work together to capture or repel the sun's energy as the seasons shift. Microclimate data collected from these sites confirms the ancient logic. Sensors placed in south-facing rooms record stable, comfortable temperatures throughout the year, even as outside air swings from freezing nights to scorching afternoons. The interiors remain buffered, cool in July, warm in January. The secret lies in the mass of the masonry. Sandstone blocks, some more than a foot thick, absorb solar energy during the day and slowly release it after sunset, flattening wild temperature swings. This thermal mass, combined with careful sighting, means less firewood burned, less smoke trapped, and less daily struggle against the elements. The cliff dwelling's design reflects a climate-smart approach centuries ahead of its time. Each wall, each plaza, each kiva is oriented for comfort and efficiency. The builders understood not just where the sun would rise and set, but how stone, shadow, and air could be woven into a system that made life not only possible, but sustainable in a harsh environment. These choices reveal a sophisticated knowledge of passive solar principles long before the term existed. The next layer of innovation lies in the materials and construction techniques that allowed these walls to last for generations. Each wall of Cliff Palace begins with stone, quarried from the very cliffs that define Mesa Verde. Builders selected blocks of Cliff House sandstone, shaping them with river cobbles and hammer stones until each piece fit the intended space. The stone was not just abundant, its grain and durability made it an ideal building material, able to withstand centuries of freeze and thaw. Once shaped, the blocks were set in courses, locked together with a mortar mixed from local soil, water drawn from seep springs, and ash from hearth fires. This blend, more than just a binding agent, absorbed and released moisture in step with the changing seasons, helping the walls breathe and flex rather than crack. Between the larger stones, smaller chinking stones were packed tightly into the mortar beds. These seemingly minor additions distributed the weight of the upper walls, stabilized the joints, and reduced the risk of shifting. Over time, chinking stones have proven their worth. Walls built this way have stood for more than 800 years. Some surfaces still show the careful touch of ancient hands, with chinking stones arranged in neat, repeating patterns, each one placed to balance the load above. Colored plasters finished many walls, both inside and out. Reds, yellows, and whites, pigments ground from hematite and other minerals, were mixed into the final plaster coats. These finishes protected the masonry from weather and added beauty to everyday life. In some rooms, bands of color still cling to the stone, hints of the original palette that once brightened the alcoves. The construction method was both practical and efficient. Short, thick walls minimized the need for long beams and helped support the weight of upper stories. The combination of sandstone, soil water ash mortar, and chinking created a flexible yet sturdy system, able to adapt to minor shifts in the cliff face over time. This foundation set the stage for the engineering solutions that followed. Roofs that spanned the narrow rooms and kivas that managed air, heat, and smoke with remarkable precision. Roofs and doorways at Mesa Verde reveal a layered approach to engineering that balanced structural strength, resource limits, and daily life. The cliff dwellings rely on short-span roofs, where wooden vigas, large beams, run from wall to wall, topped by smaller poles called latillas. This system kept spans short, usually less than 10 feet, reducing the need for long, heavy timbers that were scarce in the surrounding landscape. By keeping rooms narrow and walls thick, builders could use local juniper and pinon, trees that grew in the canyons and on the mesa above. Each viga rests in a socket carved into the masonry, distributing weight evenly and minimizing stress on the fragile sandstone walls. Modern 3D scans and stabilization notes still record the precise placement of these beams, 
revealing patterns of original construction and later repairs. Some rooms show evidence of reused sockets or added buttresses, a sign that maintenance and adaptation were ongoing tasks. The roofs themselves served as both ceilings and floors, supporting daily movement between levels. Earthen layers packed over the Vegas created solid surfaces, while also helping to insulate rooms below from heat and cold. This stacking of living space allowed for compact, multi-story dwellings without overtaxing the available timber supply. Each new floor was an engineering calculation. How much weight could the beams bear? How much soil could be laid down before risking collapse? The answers are written into the surviving architecture, where collapsed rooms and reinforced walls tell a story of trial, error, and resilience. Doorways shaped movement and defined the boundaries of private and communal space. The T-shaped door is a regional hallmark found not only at Mesa Verde, but also at Chaco Canyon and Aztec ruins. Its form, broad at the top, narrow at the base, may have eased the passage of people carrying baskets or tools while also controlling airflow and light. Some archaeologists suggest the design reduced structural stress at the lintel, while others see symbolic meaning tied to community or cosmology. Regardless of the original intent, the T-door became a signature of ancestral Pueblo architecture, signaling both cultural connection and practical adaptation. Together, these choices, short roof spans, careful timber use, and distinctive doorways reflect a deep understanding of the environment and a commitment to building for the long term. Every beam and opening was part of a system, designed to conserve resources, manage movement, and ensure the survival of the community within the shelter of the cliffs. Inside the cliff palaces, the kiva stands out as a masterstroke of environmental control and ritual design. Each kiva follows a four-part engineering kit, a ventilation shaft, a deflector, a central hearth, and the sipapu, a small floor opening with deep spiritual meaning. The ventilation shaft draws fresh air from outside, but the real innovation is the deflector. This low masonry wall sits between the shaft and the fire, ensuring that cold air never blasts directly onto the flames. Instead, air flows around the deflector, mixes gently, and feeds the hearth with just enough oxygen. The result is a steady burn, minimal smoke, and a room that stays warm and breathable even in the depths of winter. The kiva's round, semi-subterranean form amplifies these effects. Masonry pilasters support the roof, creating a banquette that stores heat and releases it slowly after the fire dies down. The thick earthen walls buffer against outside temperature swings, while the floor sits below ground level, tapping into the earth's natural insulation. In a landscape of sharp cold and high heat, these spaces become stable refugees, places where ceremony, story, and daily life could continue uninterrupted by the elements. Surface finishes inside the cliff dwellings reveal another layer of intention. Many walls, especially in kivas and important rooms, were covered with colored plasters. Bands of red, white, and yellow still cling to protected corners, created from pigments like hematite and local clays. These colors did more than brighten the stone. They likely carried meaning tied to the calendar, the landscape, or ritual cycles. Some kivas display carefully painted bands that may have marked solstice alignments or ceremonial divisions, their placement as precise as the architecture itself. Plaster served a practical purpose as well. It sealed masonry against dust and moisture, smoothing rough joints and reflecting firelight around the room. Over centuries, layers built up, each new coat recording a cycle of use, repair, and renewal. Modern 3D scans now capture these layers in millimeter detail, letting researchers trace every episode of replastering and repair. The evidence points to a culture of maintenance, where walls and plasters were refreshed in step with both need and tradition. Taken together, the Kiva's airflow kit and the artistry of colored plasters reveal a deep knowledge of both environment and meaning. These were not accidental solutions, but the work of engineers and artists who tuned every detail for comfort, symbolism, and endurance. Laser-guided scans have changed the way researchers see Mesa Verde's cliff palaces. 
In recent years, SIARC technicians and National Park Service teams have mapped the walls, rooms, and roofs of Cliff Palace with millimeter-level precision. The digital models capture every subtle curve and bulge. A faint bow in a sandstone wall, the recut edge of a beam socket, a line where new mortar blends with old. These aren't just technical details, they are the fingerprints of ancient builders and the marks of later repair. Animated phasing models now reconstruct the site's evolution, layering each building episode and repair campaign as a time-lapse diary. Secondary buttress walls appear where the original masonry began to settle, and shifts in mortar color reveal distinct construction seasons. In some rooms, the scans show sockets that have been recut to adjust for settling beams, proof that maintenance was built into the life of the dwelling. Plaster layers, visible only under digital magnification, record cycles of renewal, each coat a response to changing needs or environmental stress. For the first time, the engineering logic of Mesa Verde is visible not just in theory, but in measurable, three-dimensional evidence. Field notebooks from the National Park Service stabilization teams hold decades of careful observation, page after page of repairs, mortar mixes, and hard-won lessons. Every intervention since the 1970s is logged in detail, which walls needed shoring, which chinking stones were reset, how each patch of plaster responded to the changing seasons. These records are more than technical checklists. They read like a conversation across centuries, with today's masons puzzling over the same challenges faced by the original builders. One NPS mason described the feeling, Every time I place a chinking stone, I feel like I'm finishing someone else's work, 800 years later. In the field, debate is common. Crews weigh the merits of traditional soil and ash mortar against modern stabilizers, sometimes reverting to hand-mixed recipes when new methods don't hold up. There's pride in invisible repairs, work that strengthens without leaving a trace. The team's daily notes capture both the anxiety of preserving fragile walls and the satisfaction when a repair blends seamlessly with ancient masonry. Over time, these logs have become a living archive, tracing the craft's evolution and honoring the continuity between past and present hands. For those who work here, every repair is an act of respect, a promise to keep the Cliff Palaces standing stone by stone. 3D scans completed between 2023 and 2025 have mapped every millimeter of Cliff Palace's walls, confirming construction phases first suggested by tree ring dates from the late 1100s through the 1200s. Evidence from the National Park Service and stabilization field logs shows how ancestral Pueblo engineers used local sandstone, soil, ash, and water to build walls keyed into bedrock, with chinking stones and thermal mass masonry tuned to sun and climate. Kiva ventilation systems, T-shaped doors, and colored plasters reveal knowledge that was both practical and symbolic. Yet the full sequence of repairs and seasonal occupancy patterns still await clarification as more alcoves are scanned and microclimate data are collected. Today, these findings inform new approaches to sustainable building in dry regions. The cliff palaces are not primitive caves, but engineered villages designed for resilience, comfort, and meaning, whose lessons remain vital and unfinished.